What's going on, guys? Thanks for checking us on out. Tobin here with you. You're beautiful and I love you. Happy Miami Miracle Day. It remains Goosey's galore. And Rob Gronkowski, that grass in his face, that's forever, dude. So that is, uh, that is a, a delight. Enjoy that on social media today. I'm sure you'll see it a million times. Now, Dolphins getting ready for their Sunday night football matchup against the Los Angeles Chargers. I'm still one of those guys who still wants to call him San Diego. But excited about this one. Obviously, we got the uh, the big quarterback matchup, but we also have a little drama hanging over it, some injury mystery as it's hanging over. As Teron Armstead yesterday was uh, discussing his uh, desire, his uh, his motivation, and you know, really trying to work himself up to play in this game. Uh, it was pretty crazy hearing him talk about the idea that he couldn't even lift his arm, didn't have any power on his left side. And so wasn't really – it was a tough ask for him to go, even though he's been trying. The one thing I respect about Teron Armstead, I knew that – we knew coming into this year that he was awesome. I don't know if we knew that he was this awesome. And we also knew that there were going to be some durability questions, which have also creeped up, in fairness. But uh, very clearly tries his, his damnedest to be out there doing whatever he can. He was – Talked about the idea of maybe playing with a harness. Talked about this with uh, Leroy Horde, my co-host in the middays. If you guys like that, of course, check us on the WQAM YouTube page. And even Leroy has mentioned this. You could harness it and you could, you know, kind of keep yourself in tight, limit it. You know, do uh, do that to, to get yourself out there and not reach for anything. And uh, might still be able to give it a go, even with this pec injury. But it's still one that's going to hurt, man. Don't forget he's still dealing with that toe, which he says he's going to be dealing with all year. Uh, he did say yesterday that he could risk hurting it more, but quote, I want to play. And if I'm able, I'm going dude. You already know what it is. Double G's dude. That's what it's that's that that's here. That's here. That. And he did have the IG post from this week where he was like, if you only knew and like, you know, sweep it under the rug, do what you want. Could be something could be done. Obviously something. Obviously, if we only knew what he was going through to get to where he's trying to get to. He was officially a limited participant in practice yesterday, which is obviously fantastic news. And um, if they have him back, that's going to be exciting, dude. That's going to be that's going to be uh, truly, I think, a boost for the team. Um, although I didn't feel like it was catastrophic last week. They're better without him. Everybody realizes his value. They haven't lost without him this year. And uh, Teron Armstead's a beast, dude. Yesterday, Ty Tyreek Hill was the only guy to miss practice, missed it with an illness. But on the good side of things, uh, Jalen Waddell was a full participant after being limited on Wednesday with his fibula. So it's uh, good to see that Waddle baby Waddle is, is getting his way back. And I need to see the Waddle. Dude, I'm a little Waddle deprived. I thought Tyreek Hill said it best this week when people were asking about you know touchdown celebrations and the World Cup Waddle. He goes, yeah, World Cup Waddle's cool. I want to see it back in the end zone. We all do. Who doesn't love doing the waddle? You're a sick person if you don't like that. And it's Christmas time. It, it would feel very much in the holiday spirit. You know, I think Jalen Waddle, just keep riding this dude. You know, uh, the, the the people who are out there in the South Florida streets with, you know, your inflatable penguin decorations with waddle jerseys. Mwah, you're beautiful and I love you. Still waiting on the Dolphins to sell little stuffed penguins at Hard Rock Stadium with little number 17s on them. It's totes adorbs and they really should do it. I don't really know what, what uh, Tom Garfinkel's waiting on. The, the Garvingo should work on two things, okay? One, make the throwbacks permanent. And two, little penguins with waddle jerseys on them. Gold mine. I'm just trying to print the Dolphins more money here. That's all that's going on here. The other interesting thing, Eric Fisher, he said this. He said that he is uh, hopeful that he can play this week, which uh, which it would be an interesting one. He said uh, that he continues to work at, uh, he says, I'd love to play this week. It's from um, uh, the Miami Herald. I'd love to play this week. I want to contribute. I think we're sitting in a great spot here. Obviously, there's a lot on the line these last five weeks. This is go time. I've been very fortunate in my career to make a lot of playoff runs. I know what it takes, and if I contribute, I'm ready to roll. So that's exciting to hear, too, I think. because, And I don't know what the situation will be. I don't know if uh, you know what the, the ramp-up time for uh, uh, a guy with the long career that Eric Fisher has had. I don't know what that entails. You know, maybe, uh, you know, th maybe they'll feel very comfortable putting him out there right away. But, uh, you know, I, I think that first and foremost, getting Toronto Armstead back is going to be the, uh, the huge thing for them. And honestly, like, you know, losing Austin Jackson is a blow. It sucks for Austin Jackson. 
Um, but I, I think we all feel like, you know, the O-line was doing okay. With Armstead there, the other side of the – the other side, the other tackle – was uh was doing good that shell was holding it down from the right side so i'm not so shook about that if that becomes a thing for this but this is going to be a fun one man they really do need we talked about this road trip all the stakes that are on it they really do need to bounce back you know this has been a chargers team that's been giving up a hell of a lot of yards they um they they, they feel like they're they're ripe there for the taking they're not this powerhouse they've been dealing with a lot of injuries um you know, they, they've been very up and down. They, they seemingly, you know, can get out to leads. They blow a lot of leads, you know, in typical Chargers fashion. And you know all the drama that's already surrounding it. We all know what it's going to be with uh, with Tua versus Justin Herbert. We've already, you know, kind of uh, spit on that. But it is going to be an interesting thing. You know, this is a Dolphins team that is getting a ton of national attention, has all year because of Tua, uh, because of Tyreek Hill. And obviously are very popular. You know, it's not just a case of people like talking about the Dolphins uh, just to shit on them. I mean, like they also feel like in a lot of ways that this is a team that people really dig. I think that people really like Tua. That's very clear from the uh, the Pro Bowl votes. Tyreek Hill's been a superstar in this league for a long time. Now he's a superstar on a new team, um, is on a record pace for yards. And then Mike McDaniel seemingly goes viral every week, whether it's being mic'd up, whether it's a press conference, whether it's a, a, a look that he has on the sidelines. So they have, um, and then you talk about Jalen Waddell's celebrations, basically hitting the world stage. Like this Dolphins team had such a national irrelevance for a long time. And that's crazy to think about the winningest franchise, then going to where they were, they were haven't had a playoff win in 22 years to basically be like, Oh yeah, the dolphins. It's like, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of like this forgotten, uh, this forgotten gem that has been on earth. And, you know, they've had winning seasons, the back, you know, the last two years, back to back years, but this is different. You know, I think the difference of it, it being, the idea that everybody wants to talk about it. Even, like, I'm telling you this, like, anecdotally, and I think everybody feels this, but, like, you go to restaurants, and tell me you don't think this is the truth, but, like, you go to restaurants, I overhear people at booths, they're talking about the Dolphins. I was at jury duty, and <laughs> there's a point where the judge, or I don't know, the judge or the defense lawyer asked what I did, because I said, uh, you have to state your occupation, but then they want more details on your occupation. So I was like, talk show host, like what talk show and i said well i do a talk show on the miami dolphins radio station that's how i described it and he's like oh, okay and i i'm telling you man i we got into a, a juratic recess i don't think that's the word but anyway the jury was on a break before i got selected for the actual jury and i'm telling you at the 24 jury pool that was there I had like a fifth of the crew come up there. They just wanted to talk about the game on Sunday. Like they just wanted to talk about that. They wanted to talk about, uh, they wanted to talk about the idea of, uh, you know, will they bounce back? One guy that I was on the jury with, he was an Eagles fan, but he's also a huge Alabama fan. So he wanted to talk to and waddle. So this team rig really does feel like it's not only good, but they're really capturing uh, the imagination of this city and and a lot of people around the country they're interested in it which is why they get flexed in the prime time these next two weeks and you really are just hoping that um you know they put on a good showing which they have on prime time and that this uh they get this one man that's the, the you know is my as my friend robbie the degenerate who was loud wrong about jalen waddle said uh you don't want to count chickens before they hatch but you know sometimes you could be like my friend bryce mitchell thug nasty who will eat a chicken egg from the tap right out of a chicken's uh bleep and we'll just eat it shell and all so sometimes you just take the eggs and you just chow it down like a python dude i don't really know where i went with that analogy the point is i can't wait for sunday